All right, so problem one, we have the integral of x squared over four. So we just have to remember to use the power rule backwards, so to speak. So then we're gonna have x cubed over three times the one fourth plus our constant c. So x cubed over 12. And so our answer will be b. Number two, what's the equation of the line tangent to the graph of y equals cosine of x at x equals pi over two? Okay, so just, just remember that we can always use the good old mx plus b linear equation. And so making the slope m is <laughs> the derivative, let me just, y prime is gonna be um the negative sine of x. So we want to find the derivative or the slope at pi over 2. So we plug in pi over 2 here. So then y prime of pi over 2 is the negative sine of pi over 2, which means it's going to be negative 1. And so the slope is negative 1. And so we can write our equation as y equals negative 1x plus b. And then from here, we just solve for b by plugging in pi over 2 for x. And then we would find the y value by plugging pi over 2 in here. So the cosine of pi over 2 is just 0, so then 0 for y. So we have 0 equals negative 1 times pi over 2 plus b. So b is going to be pi over 2. And so then our equation would be y equals negative 1x plus pi over 2. And so the answer would be c. Oops. Or number 3. Number 3, we got to use the chain rule. So I like to go outside to inside. So the outside function is the squared function. So we do 2 times 2. So 2 times 2 will be 4. Keep everything else the same. Now we multiply by the derivative of the sine function, which is going to be the cosine function, and keep the square root of x the same. And now we multiply by the derivative of the square root of x. Remember that the square root of x is the same as x to the 1 half power. So the derivative of x to the 1 half power will be 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. Multiplying this out, one half of two becomes, or one, yeah, one half of four is just two. So we have two sine of the square root of x times the cosine of the square root of x all over. This is just going to be the square root of x in the denominator. And so that'll be d. Four, we're going to use the u substitution. We're going to make u the denominator x cubed plus 3x minus 5. du would then be 3x squared plus 3. Now we don't got 3x squared plus 3 but we have an x squared plus 1. So if we were to divide by 3 we would get 1 third du equals x squared plus 1. Oh, let's put the dx here. dx. And this is what we got on top. So we can rewrite our integral as the integral of one third du over u cubed, which is going to be the same as one third the integral of u to the negative three du. So the antiderivative now of u to the negative three will just be u to the negative 2 over negative 2. This is going to be times 1 third plus our constant c. So then we have negative 1 6 times 1 over. Now we could bring u to the, the denominator and make it u squared plus c. And then we just replace u squared with 
x cubed plus 3x minus 5. So then we'll have negative 1 over 6 times x cubed plus 3x minus 5 squared plus c. And then so our answer would be d. Or number five, we have to look for where the graph is concave up. Okay, so this is where we're going to have to take the second derivative, and we look for when the second derivative is positive. So the first derivative is going to be 12x squared minus 4x cubed. The second derivative will be 24x minus 12x squared. And then we want to solve for the zeros. So let's factor this. Twelve x times two minus x. So we have that x could be zero and two. So then we break it up at zero and two. So we want to see what the sign is in these intervals. So I'm going to test negative 1, 1, and 10. So you're going to plug this into the second derivative equation. If you plug in negative 1, you'll get negative 12 times 3, which will be a negative number. So it's, not, it's going to be concave down here. If you plug in 1 into here, you'll get 12 times 1 which is positive, so it's going to be concave up here. If you plug 10 into here, you'll get 120 times negative 8, which will be negative. And so then it's going to be concave up on 0, 2. So the answer is C. And number 6, this is where we're going to have to use implicit differentiation. So we take the derivative of this, which will be 1 plus 3 times 1 third y to the negative 2 thirds times y prime, and that'll be equal to y prime. Now we isolate y prime, so let's subtract this. This will just become 1. So we're going to subtract this whole thing. We'll get 1 equals y prime minus y to the negative 2 thirds y prime we'll get 1 equals y prime times 1 minus y to the negative 2 thirds divide both sides by this we'll get 1 over 1 minus y to the negative 2 thirds equals y prime and then we used to evaluate this there's no x in here, so we just, have to, we just have to plug in 8 for y. So this is going to be, so let's review this in case you get confused. 8 to the negative 2 thirds. If you, the one, the third root of 8 is just 2. So we can rewrite this as 2 to the negative 2. And 2, the, two to the negative 2 is just 1 half to the 2 or just 1 fourth. So we're going to have 1 over 1 minus 1 fourth. So 1 over 3 fourths, which will be just 4 thirds. So the answer is D. All right, I'm going to take a break now. Um, be ready to catch the next part of the, the exam.